time. Bulldogs win it. Starting to rush. Good with the shot of the goal. Big goal for Forest State. Making a three to one game. Great job by the Bulldogs to find a way to get it done. Some people don't like it, but that's just how I am. College sports is shifting. It's all about game experience. I can't think of better people to be spending my time with. We raise a family here, and it's something that's not seen in a lot of other schools. You're listening to Behind the Bulldogs, brought to you by Ferris State Athletics. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into episode six of our summer series on Behind the Bulldogs. It's myself, Brandon Worth, alongside my partner, Joe Nagy. Howdy. And we also have our special guest here for the whole summer. I think we have him on lease, but we have to return him eventually. Brody Kaiser is joining us as well. And this is your sport today, Brody. It is. It is. We are talking hockey, and I'm very excited. Yes, very exciting times here around the campus. I don't know if you guys saw new signs driving in here Mm -hmm. on the complex. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome stuff that's going down here as well. We got upgrades, people. Upgrades. Yeah, yeah. That's actually from my favorite movie, Robots, if you've never seen it. Oh, okay. Shameless plug for a movie plug there. Shameless plug. So as Brody mentioned, we are going to be talking hockey today, and there is a lot to talk about here before this upcoming year. Going to be a little bit of a different group. We'll get into that here in a little bit. We'll talk about a season recap, talk about the roster outlook going into next year, some breakouts to look forward to as always, and uh, we'll just talk some fair say hockey. So we're not going to steal everything from the off the ice. You guys can still find that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts if you want more uh, with Brody Kaiser and Beth McKinney, who do a fantastic job uh, here for our podcast network. But without further ado, we'll get right into it. But first, big thanks to Dezos Digital. If you need help with digital creation, website design, and more, find out more at DezosDigital.com for all that information. They do great stuff. But we're going to talk hockey here. And since Brody is our expert here, he's the play-by-play communications guy with uh, uh, the hockey program. He knows more than me and Joe do, especially the ins and outs of the team. We'll throw it to you here, Brody, on just a season recap, what you saw from the team and uh, maybe some things that you're looking forward to seeing improvement wise from this group coming up this year. Yeah, well, you, you kind of alluded to it that this is going to be a very new team going into next year, not just that it's going to be a young team, which it will be a young team, but also just that it's so many new faces are going to be incorporated into this program. So it's always exciting when that's the case, because when you bring a bunch of new guys in that culture will always change and there's always potential for a, a, an untapped ceiling that we haven't seen yet, which is certainly possible. And uh, I think that that's what the coaches are absolutely striving for with a really good recruiting class and some big time transfers coming in as well. This past year was really interesting. And Brandon, you were able to call a couple of games with me. And I, I believe that the first regulation win for this team was December 1st against St. Thomas, which was two months into the season. So that was a big time storyline that we were talking about for a while was even though this team was managing to pull off splits almost every single weekend their victories were coming in overtime and once we turn into conference play those points became much more important and then from there on out it was a bit of a struggle for Ferris State unfortunately until they turned it around at the end of January with a four game winning streak went on the road to uh, home and home actually against Lake State and then August Stana out on the road four game winning streak but unfortunately from there out it was winless so I think if you want to sum up the season it was a lot of back and forth at the start and then the team reached that ceiling, reached their potential. We saw what they were able to do, but then just fell short ultimately down the stretch run of the season. So there you could see the potential was there. You could see what this team was capable of. But again, going into next year, it's going to be a much different roster. So it's hard to draw a lot of conclusions based on what happened last year. But certainly the uh, the plan is there and in place and we're looking forward to the season. Yeah, the thing is, too, when you look at the schedule, especially that last part of the season, bro, like you were saying, a lot of those games were still one goal games. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like a blowout type of deal. It was still very close, which kind of makes it even tougher to lose those type of games over and over. Uh, when, you know, we lose to a shootout in the final game uh, against Northern. Uh, and then we lost the game before that 3-2, lost one to Bemidji in Bemidji uh, 3-2, and then Bowling Green lost one now 4-3. So it's not always the easiest spot to be in, but I still think if you look back on a lot of the clips and stuff like that, you saw a lot of guys kind of have a breakout near the end of the year. I know uh, Austin McCarthy kind of showed some promise. I know he's going to be transferring out, but still being able to see some of those guys Guys, uh, that were able to kind of really just get the spotlight on them a little bit more and just being able to kind of develop uh, later on. I think that's going to be pretty promising when you look at who's going to be returning. But still, it's tough when you're able to still stay in a lot of those games, but just fall short just barely in the end. Uh, but, you know, you got to give props to the guys when you're able to stick in like that and uh, play throughout the rest of the season. Yeah, for sure. And especially when you look at the roster, I'll look for next year. There was a lot of upperclassmen in this group, and there was a lot of guys that are approaching their fifth year. So we knew this was really going to be the year that we really have to try to get it all together before 
you know, uncertainty comes about once you get into the summer and the late parts of spring where decisions are made on the outlook moving forward for this team and Coach Daniels' group. And there's a lot that are unfortunately going to be leaving us, but there's a lot that are also coming in. So it's going to be a very interesting team this year. Uh, Bernie mentioned here nine freshmen, I believe, coming into this group next year, which is going to be a really interesting thing to watch just because college hockey is such a, I think, such a unique sport. And Brody, you can especially tap into this as well, that we always see standout freshmen that are always at the top of not only their class, but the CCHA, each conference, and even nationally, we have players freshman year that are complete standouts. So it can turn around in a really quick, fast, and a hurry. But I think especially for this group and playing in the CCHA, I mean, it's one of the toughest college hockey conferences there is. So you're going to be hoping for a quick turnaround from some of these guys. But as well, there's also some notable transfers that can kind of help fill the void from some of these other schools as well. For sure. And if you look at this Bulldog team, actually, over the past couple of seasons, the freshman classes have been very, very impactful. Two years ago, when we went on the road and swept Bowling Green in the first round of the CCHA playoffs, that freshman class was seriously impactful. Caden Galt and Jacob Badal both had goals in that series against Bowling Green. Other guys, you know, Andy Noel, Tyler Schleppe, Connor McGrath, that whole class was very impactful as a freshman two years ago. This past year, Jack Messick, Luigi Benacasa, Emerson Good, Trevor Tallene, Holden Dole during that four game win streak was really involved in the offense as well. All those freshmen really, really made an impact each and every season. And you're absolutely right, Brandon, that if your freshmen can come in and have that kind of impact year over year, that really bodes well for your team, especially when you have so many, uh, such a large class coming in like the Bulldogs do this year. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. I mean, you already said, too, like the culture and stuff changing. I think it's a really interesting spot for the Bulldogs to be in because you can still uh, kind of find a new identity because, you know, you know, when you look at the overall record, not the best looking one. And especially now seeing the new beginnings, when you got a brand new season, you got a team coming in, you got a brand new captain, and especially maybe get some new transfers in that can offer some more um, type of leadership that, you know, we might not be used to seeing. I think you're going to be able to see a new Bulldog team that, you know, they got the sky's the limit right now. You got really no other place to go than up. They were uh, one of the teams that was kind of struggling near the end. I mean, I think we were talking about they were third to last when it came to scoring uh, in NCAA hockey as a whole. So the best part about that is there's really no expectations when it comes to their ability uh, for improvement and stuff like that. So I'm thinking that you're going to be able to see just a lot of weight kind of taken off the shoulders of these freshmen that are going to be coming in. And that's the best part about it is you really can take off those expectations. And when you got no expectations, that's the type of that's the type of play that you usually can do the best because you got no stress about it. Yeah, for sure. Looking ahead to next year, we've gotten the schedule out already by the CCHA, and there's certainly some notable dates that are very exciting. Unfortunately, we are out of the GLI lineup this year. Sad face. We won't play at Van Andel, but it's going to be sweet to go play at Pfizer for over mm-hmm. in Wisconsin. So that'll be really fun to see that holiday tournament will be happening later on in the year. Uh, but starting off with the Red Hawks, as always, tradition continues on with Miami the first weekend of October, I believe. Uh, and then we get the the fun one. Me and Brody always look forward to this series. Western Michigan, where we have a home and home. We go to Lawson and as well, we play in eggs and bacon the next night. So it's really fun to watch and see uh, just the two traditional rivalry schools clashing each and every year. Um, but then right in, we got St. Lawrence and then the CCHA schedule and Slate is on full swing, Bemidji State, Bowling Green. And especially with this schedule, I mean, you you see a lot of these, uh, these road stands in the middle of the year. And maybe that's actually a good thing for this group because it seemed like there was a lot of bouncing back and forth. And I think the biggest thing was there was a lot of the hard trips that were consecutively and Brody can attest to this being one on the travel list and going on to these places, going to Bemidji and then going to Augustana, some of the two longest trips in college hockey, let alone outside of the Alaska teams. It it was really took a toll on those guys. And especially like you mentioned playing overtime games, almost every other game, the entire first half of the year, that's really taxing. And it's only five more minutes, right? Five more minutes on the ice after you've played 60, I mean, look, think of it, think of it exponentially, right? You are getting exponentially more tired the more the game goes on. So you are at the peak of that curve and you are continuing to push it upwards. So it's super hard on the guys. But this year, it just definitely seems like a little bit more favorable of a schedule. Obviously, we're going to have to finish the year uh, up in the UP, which I think will be very interesting just based on the outlooks that we'll see uh, with these new teams. I mean, Northern Michigan's a team that's got a new coach this year. So we're going to see a little bit of a different look from them as well. Uh, But then you got Lake State as well as Michigan Tech. I mean, Michigan Tech fans up there. 
It's a hard place to play. So uh, that to end the year will be very interesting. But it seems like this year might be a little bit more favorable as far as the schedule goes. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this group responds, especially over the road stand. Uh, I was certainly noticeable uh, over the holidays in the beginning part of December all the way into January. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the schedule from last year, Brandon, because you're absolutely right. And and we talked a lot about this during the season was just how loaded the back half of the schedule was in terms of the travel that the guys would have to go through at Minnesota State, home and home with Lake State, which for those of you that don't know, means that as soon as the game at home is done on Friday night, you load the bus and go straight up to the Sioux. Then the next week out in South Dakota, to take on Augustana home series out at Bemidji, which is the longest trip in the CCHA home series at Lake State and then at Bemidji again. So that is a ton of travel to close out the year. And I definitely think that's a good point, Brandon, that this year the travel doesn't seem to be quite as extreme, especially in the second half of the season. I'm looking at four home series of the final six to close it out after a trip to St. Thomas. And then, of course, the Milwaukee trip, which is going to be super, super cool. Definitely disappointing that we're not able to be in the in the GLI again just because it's so close to home. But uh, playing out in Milwaukee is going to be absolutely awesome in that quick trip. So the travel is going to be, I think, hopefully a little bit less intense than it was this past year for the guys and in and, and that second half of the year when they're grinding with school and things like that as well. But still, um, got to gotta attack the opponent in front of you regardless of, of the schedule. And I do think it's going to be interesting to close the year out uh, up at Michigan Tech and then come home for the Northern Michigan series. Those are two teams that are pretty big rivals for Ferris State historically. So that should be interesting to, to end the year with. And the good part about it, too, is when you see that kind of holiday road trip, it's you only get that start right, I think, when exams start to finish up. So you really don't have a whole lot of schoolwork to kind of focus on. And the best part about it is, too, when you come back, that's when the next semester is going to start. So that's positive. But also, me and Brody live together, so I can't wait to hang out even more at the end of the season. <laughs> and he, I'm not going to be at home alone most of the day. So that's going to be the coolest part. Two thumbs up for Joe. Two having, thumbs up for me. Having a buddy to watch hockey with. And not having to watch it by himself on the stream mm-hmm. with no Brody there in the house. But no, it's going to be super exciting. And we can't wait for the season to start. Um, and really looking back to last year, uh, more on things of improvement. I mean, you can look statistically... Uh, you're certainly going to see some things that stand out, right? The penalty kill percentage is one that I think me and Brody talked about so many times in our pregame broadcast on just being able to defensively hold down on special teams. And that, of course, comes with the taxing play that we played in over the first half of the year. I really do believe that that had a little bit of a uh, of a factor within that low percentage at the start of the year. Uh, But offensively, uh, there was just some we really we had to rely on a lot of short and a lot of low scoring games. And that was something that you look especially complete in contrast to the way that it really ended up trying to be later on in the year where we tried to play a lot of these more high scoring games, a lot of the low scoring. uh, We had a lot of talented goal scorers, um, but there was just not enough. It seemed like aggression at times to get shots on net. Uh, I think that was one thing. I think we look back uh, on the stats. We were, I think, 57th in the nation when it comes to goal scored per game, uh, which obviously there's about 60 some teams and you can look at that and say, man, that's not great. That's certainly an area of improvement, just trying to see more pucks go in the back of the net. Was it a confidence thing? Was it a scheme thing? We can't really make that judgment because obviously the players are in that situation. But I think there's a lot more uh, untapped potential with this group. And I think especially when it looked at defensively this year, when you look on the other side, goals allowed, it was a really young group. You're looking at a pair of freshmen on the top line with Shouty and Messick as your top defenders early on in the year. And they're playing their first years of hockey. That's a really tough spot to be in. And so that can certainly be improved going forward. Uh, now that you have a little bit more experience on the back end, and maybe that transition will help you kind of solidify the defense. Now it's more focused on the offensive side in the front half of the blue line. Yeah, it's it's interesting to talk about the special teams play too. And, and Brandon, you mentioned you alluded to the penalty kill percentage, which on the on the season finished at seventy four percent. But if you if you look at the first half numbers versus the second half numbers, there was drastic improvement on the penalty kill. This was a team that was below seventy percent in the first half, not good at all. But in the second half, was up over ninety. I believe at one point they were ninety three percent on the penalty kill in the second half of the season, which trailed only Boston College and all of college hockey. So that shows you that there's something that works with the system. The guys just have to be bought in and, and 
find ways to implement that scheme that's being in place by uh, put in place by the coaching staff. The one area where the Bulldogs will certainly need to be improving is on the power play. 14% in the season, 12%, so even lower in the conference play. That's an, an area where, where Ferris State will absolutely need to try to improve. And as you mentioned, Brandon, a team that struggled to score last season could really be benefited by a strong power play. So I'm sure that the coaching staff will do everything they can in the, for this upcoming season to really strengthen down and clamp down on the on the uh, special teams, but specifically the power play. Yeah, and the thing, too, you got to look at is across the CCHA, you're seeing a lot of changes. Northern, at one point, I think they only had like four guys on their roster, uh, and then they have like their incoming and stuff like that. But with a brand new coach, that's going to be some big changes. I mean, they only finished, I mean, uh, four spots above us. They were right in that kind of middle ground uh, where they were fighting for that second place spot, but they're going to be in a brand new area. You also got Lake State, who's kind of switching up a little bit. Michigan Tech, I think, has a new coach this year as well. Uh, So it's going to be. A definitely a big time change and I think bro like you were saying with the stats and stuff like that if they can keep that up and then find some improvement especially with this new core group of guys coming in it's going to be a solid spot. I mean, CCHA is not set in stone really where everybody's going to be ended up at. I mean, you'll probably have the favorites with St. Thomas and Bemidji and stuff like that. But a lot of those teams like Northern Minnesota State's kind of getting a new few guys. Some of them transferred out. You'll see a little bit of a change up. And I think it's going to be a solid spot for us to kind of make some noise that people aren't expecting. I don't think people realize how tough making your way up conference standings is in the CCHA, let alone in college hockey in general. Because I mean, you're looking at a lot of these schools, right? I mean, you're at the Division One level. It's hard enough to get a program together that is sustainable long-term with success. I mean, you look at some of these programs like Denver. You're looking at some of these programs um, that are notorious for being great, the Bostons, Boston U, Boston College. And you're just like, man, the consistency that these guys show each and every year. And you're looking at their conference, and you're looking at the teams behind them, and you're like, whoa. They are beating these teams. I mean, you look at the NCHC, and I think at one point we were looking at that conference, and they had, I believe, their top their top five teams were all top 20 teams in the country. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just crazy when you look at it. The CCHA has had three, four teams in at a time in years past. I think that's the year we had, I think, maybe uh, two in there once when we had Michigan Tech as well. Uh, Minnesota State was kind of knocking on the door at the time, but we also had St. Thomas who had received votes. So they, we, had, we were a little bit there, but years past when we had – Minnesota State is a top two team. Tech was in there. Bemidji State was fighting in. Uh, I mean, the consistency that the CCHA has, it really is tough to climb that ladder. And it really gives you perspective on teams like St. Thomas. Look at the turnaround that they've had only in a couple of years. So uh, it's really tough when you got a lot of these talented programs moving up because a lot of these teams are so good. I mean, you're looking at four points as being a huge win, right? Being able to win a game in or two games in overtime or at least be able to force a tie after getting a win. You're taking home four out of the six points. That's more than your opponent is taking home. That's a huge win, and that's so hard to come by. You see so many splits, no matter if you're having the five, the five matchup against the 55 when it comes to the college hockey rankings or if it's 30 against 30. I mean, splits are very common, and that's when it's so hard to get points together, and that certainly is with this conference, just for how talented it is year after year. Yeah, and and one thing that's really important, too, when you're talking about climbing up the conference standings and finding a way, especially when you're on the road, to take a majority of points or at least takes three of the six points in a conference series is your leadership group. And that's something that the Bulldogs have really had a great uh, great success with over the past couple of seasons. You can look back two years ago as Brendan McLaren and Matt Slick, along with you know a lot of the other guys that have been on the team for a few years. This past year, Brendan McLaren was the captain once again. He did such a phenomenal job of leading this group. And now the reins are being held uh, handed over to Travis Shouty, which I am so excited to see how Shouts does in this new role as the captain. He's going to be a junior this season. He was a heck of an offensive player for Ferris State over his first two years. Really, really solid defensively as well. And, and as he moves up into this leadership role, I really am excited to see what he can do for this team, not only on the back line and as an offensive based defenseman, but as a leader of this group. And only being a junior really shows that he already has a voice in the locker room. He's had a voice over his first two seasons. But as he steps now into this full leadership role, and of course, we'll name the A's later on uh, closer to the start of the season. But as Shouty leads this leadership group for the Bulldogs, it's going to be extremely interesting to see how the how the team responds to that and how they take his leadership into effect. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited for it. And I think one of the coolest parts is also finding out who's going to be kind of leading the team. And honestly, it's the best part about it. Or the one thing that's very interesting about this is that 
Shouty's kind of got a little bit different of a situation, seeing that they have so many new guys coming in. It's going to be up to him to kind of help set the tone and the culture for the team. But I don't think that's going to be too much of a task for him, uh, seeing how he was already able to do that. And already as a junior, being able to be named captain, that's a huge deal. So Yeah, certainly going to be interesting. We have a lot of transfers coming in, a lot of young guys. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to be losing a, a bit of our scoring, which is obviously uh, on paper is, is a big knock going into the season, right? I mean, you look at Travis Shouty, number three on the team. As a defenseman, first of all, we need to point that out. As a defenseman was third on the team. That's how great he played. Uh, but losing the other four in the top five when you got Venuto, Benincasa, Branshaw, Polkorny, uh, that's, that's a really big blow. That uh, really is. But there is opportunities coming in. There's some great guys that have come in uh, from the portal. Really excited watching some of their film. Really looking forward to that. And I'm sure there will be announced to certainly moving on here later. Uh, but it's super exciting to see uh, a little bit of a new change. And it's not necessarily not and the old guys the old guys they, they i'm not necessarily saying that they're old like in age but i mean <laughs> they've been here so long and, and like you mentioned brody the leadership core of this group has been here for three four yeah. years so we call them the old guys because they have been with this group and they've led this group uh to a lot of successful things and and, and it's going to be new just to see a new group right and i think that's kind of what the a little bit of the excitement is uh just to be seeing what kind of a, maybe a new strategy maybe a new look at how this team plays uh maybe it'll be something to get over the hump a little bit because we've had a, a couple of year skids here which has been uh very tough as you mentioned Brody, two years ago uh the bowling green sweep series really since then we've kind of we have a knocking on the door but we haven't been able to get the get the lock unlocked really we haven't been able to get through the door and keep moving forward uh but maybe this group will be uh uh, the group that really brings us home. But I guess here to finish out, we'll go into our breakout candidates here. Um, and I think there's a lot of names we can throw in on this list. Obviously, some that probably listeners don't even know about yet, and they'll find out later on when we start to release the official rosters. Uh, but I know that my pick, um, it's not going to be Travis Shotty. I'm not going to be that guy, <laughs> uh, obviously, because he's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, but I think really out of this group and a lot of these guys that I would see uh, moving forward that I think has a lot of I think has a lot of room to grow. Uh, I think Emerson Good might be that guy, man. I really do love the way that he plays. And you look at how Emerson really developed throughout the year. He shined in a lot of these big moments. And I think that's something that you look for out of a rookie to be able to step up to the plate. And I think just watching him develop over this past year, I think has been really good for this team. And especially for a guy that is going to be relied for up front, right? He's one of those main guys that's going to be relied on scoring wise. And I think that's something that he might take in. I think he's going to develop really well. And I think just for his size and frame as well, I think that's going to set him up for successful sophomore campaign coming up this year. Excellent pick. Love it. My pick has got to be Tyler Schleppi. I mean, he did so well this year. I mean, he had about a minus six there in the plus minus spot, but being on the ice for so long, I mean, it's kind of really tough to be able uh, to kind of have a positive uh, when it comes to that plus minus. But for him to be able to put up, I think it was 10 points uh, all throughout the season, had a few goals to his name as well. And only being a sophomore, he's going to be a guy who's going to be pushed into that leadership position as one of the few upperclassmen, and he's going to get a lot of ice time. So I think he's going to be able to step it up, especially with 44 shots. He's not afraid. Uh, to find the find that gap and find that hole where you got to put the puck in and for him to be able to just improve in the offseason I think you're going to see him uh, really push as one of the better players in the CCHA good one I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to take my breakout pick and also throw out an honorable mention because I, I just love this guy's work ethic so I'll go with my breakout pick first and I'm going to choose Trevor Tallene he was a guy that Freshman defenseman last year, towards the back half of the season, he really, really developed very, very well. Started to settle into his role at the start of the season. He was in and out of the lineup for the first couple months, um, but really established a consistent role. Even playing on the top defensive line alongside Nico DeVita towards the end of the season. 279 line as a freshman, good offensive skills, really physical guy on the back end. Love his potential for this team on the backside. And then my honorable mention is going to go to Jacob Badal. I just have a feeling that that Bades is going to have a fantastic career by the time he's done here. Hasn't really done a whole lot through a year and then last year as a sophomore did get hurt unfortunately 5 games into the season, but He's going to have a great career. Watch out for him. Yeah, Bades has got a lot of opportunity ahead of him, and I think people will start to see him shine coming up this year. But it's going to be a great year, guys. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing getting back into the barn. I know the ice is going out here very soon, so that's obviously very exciting as well. And, man, if 
when we get that dog pound back, we can get them back in full force here at home games. I mean, this team statistically plays much better at home than on the road, and that's a testament to the fans, and they certainly bring it. We need them more than ever coming up this year, so we can't wait to look forward to some of these great games that we have here in store over in Engelglaben across the hall from where we're recording from right now. Yeah, I'm excited. I just miss hockey, man. I, I know, just want right? hockey to be back. Is it October? Yeah. Right. We got some yeah. big stuff coming too uh, in the works, so it's gonna be awesome. It it's is gonna, gonna be awesome. It is gonna be fun. We had the Stanley Cup, and that was obviously great. But now that it's over, it's like, all right, October, get Hurry a little up. closer. We're in a weird sports spot where there's like nothing on except MLB. Yeah, that's true. Which the Tigers right now, yeah. Not anyway, as much to cheer about. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> sign. We should cut off this episode here. Thanks you for listening with us. Big thanks to Dezos Digital. And we look forward to next week coming up here. Looks like we're going to be talking some hoops. And let me tell you what, this past year was great for hoops. So don't go anywhere. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. And until next time here on Behind the Bulldogs. Take care, everybody. Take care, everybody.